All of the dance, type of dance. My God, my God. But you can't go. Because you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good. And as you may have to entertain the king, I want to tell you, all of us, I would say, need a outpouring of God's spirit today. This Christmas needs to be hectic. I dare say all of us. So for about two or three, four or five minutes, would you get everybody around you? And is just slipping up a hand. Begin to entertain the King. Lord, I love you. You are worthy. I want God to come into this place and fill every corner and crevice of the atmosphere of the sanctuary. We are in the home of the Lord. We are in the sanctuary of the Most High. And you have to give praise. Hey, honey, give me pray. Go ahead, pray to me. Some of the young people who have been out here too, just come on out here. Help me give God some praise. That's the Holy Ghost. That was your heart.
feel a sweet, sweet presence of the Lord this morning. That's the reason we're here. Amen. As Pastor said, we're, we're delighted to have the Lord Saint here with us. Amen. God's good today. We're glad to see each and every one of you here, our visitors. We're thankful. We're honored. We feel privileged that you would choose to be with us to serve and worship today. In Jesus' name. There is no prayer tonight. There will be no live groups this Wednesday, December the 21st. Uh, Sister Mary wanted me to remind everybody this upcoming week there's going to be very low temperatures. So please take care to insulate your pipes and different things like that. Tomorrow evening at 6.30, we have women of worship here at this, at this church. Here at the church at 6.30. My ushers would come. And where'd the pastor go? Hopefully he's okay with this. Brother Rice, you can stay right there. Can I have a couple of our ministers? I want to play a pray for Brother Rice today. His mom, his mom is in poor health right now, and he's he's a dear brother, and we love him. And we want to breathe life into him today. He's been going through going through it here lately. We, we know God He can take care of it, right? He can bring life into Him. So if everybody would reach your hands towards Brother Christ, Brothers of God, anointing. And as a church body, we just reach our hands towards Him and give Him strength. God, we ask you today, before we go forward in this service, let your anointing, let your virtue flow into Brother Rice right now, God. Let Him feel your warmth. And your strength, oh God, minister to him in a new way. God, let him know that he is where he needs to be. And he is loved and God is for him. And everything's going to be okay in Jesus' name. There's no weapon formed against you. In Jesus' name, brother, I hope you feel the, the strength that God wants you to have. In Jesus' name.
can I turn to? To whom else can I run to in a storm? To whom else, when the wind's blowing, can I run into the cleft of the rock? To whom else can I turn to when my soul is battered and torn and bruised? I only know one place to go to, Brother Cook. That's to Jesus. I have found when nothing else makes sense. When my world seemed all upside down. I had way more questions than I had answers. I couldn't figure it out in my own mind. And my own human brain couldn't wrap itself around the complex situation. I found that I could turn to Jesus. And even though sometimes he didn't take the situation away, he somehow by his grace and his mercy and his spirit I don't know how he does it but he gives us the grace and the strength to get through the trial. I may not always take the trial away immediately, but I found that he helps us through the trial. I'm glad this morning that we don't have to turn to the substances and the things of this world to try to find hope and peace. But in his presence, fullness of joy. Let's sing that one more time and I'm going to bring God's word to us. Mm. You just lift your hand up and just love Jesus. Okay. I want him to know that I know I can't make it without him. I can't do without him. I want him to know I can't do it without him. I can't live and breathe without him. Lord, I need you. I can't do anything without you. Mm. I just want to bless you this morning. Jesus, you don't God, if I've got you, I've got everything that I need.
need, why don't you slip your hand up in the air? God has already heard you, please. I believe God is wanting to touch somebody this morning in a definite way. I believe when you leave, He wants you to know without a shadow of a doubt that He's heard your prayer and that He's interested in you. I believe the Lord this morning wants you to know that He has not forgotten you. Through our frailty, frailty of humanity and our failures of the flesh and our struggles with life and our many mistakes that we bring before the throne. I some, sometimes really, I, I'm amazed, I'm perplexed, I'm just blown away, really, that God keeps loving the way he loves. Because as humans, we we get frustrated and we write people off and we get frustrated with them and don't understand why and all this stuff, but God somehow just keeps loving, keeps reaching. I have observed as you cried unto me with a broken heart, a mind full of questions, a mind tormented by your circumstance. I want you to know that I am the God that hears, and I am a God that has hands and that can reach. I have eyes and I can see. I have feet and I can come to where you're at. Don't give up. Don't be dismayed. I'm coming soon to get my bride. Don't give up. Don't quit now. I have heard you cry and I will give you grace and mercy and strength to make it through your current trial and your struggle. If you'll keep reaching, if you'll be faithful to me, I will be faithful to you. I have heard your call.
receive all honor today, Lord. Only you are worthy. Only you are worthy. Only you are worthy. Only you are worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Thank you, praise team. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy are you, Lord Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. Worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to give you a little word this morning. I don't know how deep or complex it's going to be. So all of you brilliant minds and brilliant, theolo brilliant theologians, I may disappoint you this morning. But I've got a little word that I want to give to you. And uh, I just believe God's wanting to do some big, big, big things. Amen. Amen. We have just barely scratched the surface. We've just barely touched the tip of the iceberg of what God really wants to do. And I believe there's so much more. Turn your attention to Luke chapter 1. Start at verse 11. Thank you for being in God's house this morning. Last full complete service. Uh, we are going to have, just so you'll know, uh, we're going to have a somewhat of an abbreviated service Christmas morning, Mary and I will be here. I'm, I'm, I'm right on that, right? All right. And uh, so, <laughs> all right. And uh, we understand that some of you have got plans with family. Yes, there's not going to be any Sunday school. So to just be, we'll be here at 11. And uh, we'll have a, a service, just a short service. I'm not going to preach for two or three hours. So. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So, uh, those of you that want to, you're, you're more than welcome to come. And uh, we're going to just give the Lord a little praise and uh, have a good time together. Amen. Luke chapter 1, verse 11. Amen. If you got it, say, O oh, me. <laughs> All right. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. <laughs> Sounds like we just heard that a while ago. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. <clears throat> and many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel, and stand in the presence of God. Wow. I'm jealous, Gabriel. You better watch out. I'll take your place real quick, buddy. I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And hope to make sense of this, but I want to preach to us this morning, God outside of the box, God outside of the box. Brother Lewis, say, come here just a minute.
This is one of the sweetest men you'll ever meet. And I, I mean that. Amen. One of the most gentle spirits. I've traveled around the world. And usually people. Uh, I'll put it to you this way. You can't give them enough. A lot, a lot of countries. They, they are just. Uh, they're, they're takers, takers, takers. I have to make this man. Literally, I have to force him. Am I, am I right? I, I've actually, I've actually told him. Look, I've got news. If your wife is sick and she needs some medicine, but I'm not sending you any money unless you promise me that you're going to take half of what I send you and go get your wife medicines and the things that she needs, and you're going to go get her a new dress. Promise me, I'm not sending the money. Well, no promise me, I'm not. Okay. He and his wife pour back in to that work in Haiti. And I'm talking about people that, the old expression, don't have two pennies to rub together. If you want to know poverty, when it gets to where we won't get killed down there, because they are under intense gang pressure and stuff right now, people are getting killed. It's, I'd love to go down there, but I'm, I'm usually not afraid to travel around the world, but I don't want to go to Haiti right now. Wouldn't be good for your health, would it? But he is a giver. And I, I want to let you know our church gave them a love offering this morning. And uh, we are in the process of working to get a water well, fresh water well. When you, when you, can, when you, when you just have to scrounge around just to find some old water to drink, that's dangerous. When you're scratching around just, just trying to find something to eat, it's not healthy, it's not good. And I'm believing that the Lord is fixing to open the doors. Amen. We have been able to team up. Uh, I served on the Missions India uh, board group, and they have taken an interest. I presented Haiti to them. They have taken an interest in Haiti. And it appears that we're going to be able to, and, and sometimes you have to play the game with them, but it looks like we're going to be able to pay some of the main gangs off and get them to work with us. Help us be praying. Because sometimes you just have to do things that way. But if we can get some of the main gangs working with us, we've got some inroads, there's some contacts already made, and we hope to be able to get a fresh water well dug close to the, on the church property. And what that will allow us to do then is... He will be able to begin to take some of the young men of the church and bottle water and actually begin to sell some water. And we're hoping to create a little commerce there. And he will be able to provide for his family and for the for the church people. And uh, you, you want to say a couple of words? Address the church? Praise the Lord, everyone. I don't think I can say anything this morning, but... I can say, God stay on His throne. Yes. And everything that you need Him to do for you is coming. <laughs> coming and you provide about your name. Yeah. I oh, you hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for everything that you've done for, for me and for Haiti.
I'll drop this along the way. If you run across extra money that you found tucked in a coat somewhere, or, and you just it's just burning, you got to do something with it. Rather than go buy that new game or that new CD or that new toy, Amen. Ask the Lord to maybe put it on your heart, hand it to me, and say, "Send it to Haiti." I'm, I'm telling you that there's there's orphans over there that are if they get a little bit of rice every day, they're doing good. And so we want to bless them. Thank you for standing. I want to preach to you just a little bit. Amen. You're welcome to be seated. Amen. God outside of the box. You know, I'm not a I'm not a real thematic preacher. I don't I don't I don't really like to, you know, Easter, you have to preach a formal Easter message. I, I like to try to fill out what God wants to say to his people. And so Consistent with that, I'm really not going to preach. I'm not preaching a Christmas message. But I was thinking about it that, you know, on Christmas morning, uh, ladies, if you get that, you know, special dish or crock pot or something for the kitchen or something for the house that that you've been wanting, and you say, "Well, I can really use that. That would be helpful." That's you get excited on Christmas morning. Men, maybe you've been wanting that new skill saw or cordless impact wrench or, or whatever it may be. Well, that would be so helpful. And you see that box sitting under the Christmas tree and it's Christmas morning. And you're just sitting there looking at the box. And you just keep looking at the box. And you keep looking at the box. You just keep looking at the box. And then you keep looking at the box. The usefulness, the power of that object that's in that box will not be realized if the tape's not cut. If that tight ribbon is not broken. If that box lid is not taken off, if that object is not taken out of the box and the plastic ripped off of it and it put in its usable, workable position. And so it was with mankind when we read the Old Testament. Sin had separated man in the garden. In essence, sin had put God in a proverbial box. The 613 separate laws was not given man the power to overcome. Amen. God's spirit was in a box. And because of mankind's apostasy and falling back into sin, because the law was just that. It was just a law. It was just word without spirit. Amen. You know why it's important that we have moves of the Holy Ghost like we had at the beginning of the service? Because the Bible says the word killeth but the Spirit maketh alive. When the Holy Ghost flows, when the Holy Ghost moves, when the anointing flows, it makes this come alive in our heart. Because praise and worship begins to open the box and allows God to begin to move. Amen. I don't want to do church without Him. I don't want to do church without the anointing. I don't want to do church with God in the box. I'm telling you, I don't want to go through the motions in 2023, but I want to press into a place that we've never been before. I'm ready for God to get out of the box. Amen. There's so much more. And so sin and apostasy kept putting God back in a box. And towards the end of the Old Testament period, there was a intertestimonial period that was about 400 years. And God went silent. The Bible says God shut up the heavens. His spirit for four centuries did not move. There was no inspiration from the Spirit for 400 years. Can you imagine going 400 years without hearing from God? Without feeling what we felt this morning? Can you imagine going four years 
without feeling some inspiration from above. I can't imagine going four weeks without feeling the anointing. I can't imagine going for, I don't want to go four hours without feeling the touch of God's hand. Amen. I intend to seek for it. I intend to reach for it. Amen. I'm telling you, I made some, I was up early this morning praying for you and praying for me. I don't know what time it was, five o'clock maybe, six o'clock, but I was praying, God, I want to, there's, I, hey, I, little things, time that I could spend in the word of God or praying, I want to start laying down even more things. I want to lay everything down. I want to become so saturated. You say you're going to get, yeah, hey, you know what? I want to get so saturated by God's spirit. Maybe I do become of no earthly good. That's fine. I don't want to be any part of this world anyway. But I want to walk in the spirit. I'm hungry to walk in the Holy Ghost like I never have before. I'm not satisfied with where I'm thankful for where I'm at. But I'm not satisfied. I want God out of the box in my life. Amen. And so as we enter in to the New Testament, we find God trying to get out of the box. The harshness of those 613 different laws was not working. There was no power to overcome. And there was no joy. It was just law. Can you imagine it's hard for our minds to wrap around, but a list. You get a piece of paper, and you put number one, dot, number two, dot, and you list 613. By the time you get to writing just from one to 613, just the numbers, you're wore out. But can you imagine a complete list from number one to number 613? And the sad part about it is most of it was Thou shalt not. In a negative context. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. I'm glad under the new covenant. Jesus says, Thou shalt live. Thou shalt have life and that more abundantly. Thou shalt have joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. Thou shalt be an overcomer. Thou shalt overcome this world. Thou shalt overcome. The of the oh, we're living in a positive message this morning. Amen. If you want to overcome, God will give you the power to overcome. Amen. God is outside of the box. We just have to let him outside of the box in our own life. Oh, praise God. So, God said, I want to get out of this intertestimonial period. I want to enter in to a closer walk. With humanity, he says, I'm going to have this guy come by the name of John. Yeah. And he's going to be my forerunner. Yeah. And he's going to go testifying that I'm coming. And he's going to tell him he's coming. One that I'm not even worthy to unloose his shoes. I'm not, I can't, I'm not even worthy to take the sandals off and wash his feet. But I'm telling you, he's coming to overcome the enemy. He's coming to overcome your situation. He's coming to overcome the lies of the devil. And the things that's holding you back. He's come and he's coming to deliver you from the scourge of sin and iniquity. Oh, he's coming to deliver you and shed his blood so that you can have life and have it more abundantly. He's coming. I'm coming to announce the way of the Lord. I want to stop right here and make some announcements myself. I've come this morning to announce that I believe. There's some folks that's sick and tired of where you've been. Now understand, not, not thankful. I'm thankful for all the Lord's done in 2023. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not satisfied to let 2023 just be a redo of 2022. I'm not wanting a loop in the spirit where we loop the same thing over and over year by year. I believe it's God's will for us to go to a whole new level. I believe it's God's will for us to step into an anointing that we've never stepped into. I believe it's God's will for us to step into signs and wonders and miracles like we never have before. 
It's God's will. Press it get out of the box. Let God out of the box and let him be God. Amen. I want to see God do some incredible things in the spirit. I really believe that I'm looking at I'm looking at an outreach team. Can I go ahead? Can I go ahead and just say some things prophetically? Can I can I go ahead and just speak some things that are not as though they were? I trust in God. That on the on the outreach team, there's going to become a passion. And a burden. Not that there's not already one. But I'm, t- I'm talking about we're here. But I'm talking about all of us going here. Are here. I believe that we're going to have the van and that bus. And we're going to have to be running up. I believe that the children's pastor and wife, there's going to come a burden and a passion. Amen. That's going to drive them. You say, well, you're picking on them. No, I'm speaking as a, hey, they're doing good. But I'm not talking about just doing good. I'm talking about stepping into a realm of the anointing. Like never before, I'm talking about going to a place. Hey, you think my vision of 100 kids in Sunday school is crazy. Oh, no. Oh, no. You let some people get fired up. You let the anointing hit some people. And they begin to pray like never before. They begin to have a burden like never before. I'm speaking as it is. I'm saying the youth group is going to grow by 12 to 15 at least next year. Because our youth pastor, why? I'm going to get a burden to pray, a burden to push, a burden to reach. It's going to affect the young people. I believe there's some young people that are sick and tired of being where you have. And you want to get to a place of anointing that you never experienced before. And you say, Pastor, I want to go. You pastor. Show me how to do it. I want to teach some Bible study. I want to see how you do both fathers. Hey, why not? Why not there be some miracles in these churches? Why not somebody get healed in these churches? Oh, yes. I had lost my mind, but I'm telling you right now, our God is way bigger than what we're getting. They're going to have to start a Bible study team. And I'm saying it like it's already done. At a minimum, we're going to get six Bible studies continuously going every week. I believe in Jesus' name. The anointing is going to rest on you. God's going to open the doors. God's going to put the people right in your hands. But it's going to happen in Jesus' name. I believe some of the leaders over some of the other departments, you're going to say, hey, I'm ready to step into the water. And see the box come off. Hey, if we let God out of the box, there is no telling what we'll see God do. Somebody give God some praise. Oh, hallelujah. I believe what I'm telling you. As you step further away from this world, the things of this world grow strangely dim. And the light of the marvelous gospel gets brighter and brighter as a noonday sun. I'm declaring in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that we're stepping into a supernatural 2023. Yes, Jesus. I believe it. Mm. Anybody believe that with me?
Oh, hallelujah. If you believe it, help me praise him a minute. I feel his spirit. Oh, Holy Ghost, have your way. I believe the best is yet to come for those who will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. If we will begin to let the things of this world grow strangely dim. Amen. I can tell you, the things of this world won't do. There's nothing in this world that'll do. But I'm telling you, in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. At his right hand, there's pleasure forevermore. In his presence is where power and glory is manifested. I want to turn him loose and let him be God like I've never seen him before. For John to come as the Lord's forerunner, God chose Zacharias and Elizabeth. 88 years old, 92 years old, in that order. Now men that are 88, How would you like to become daddy? <laughs> All you women that are 92. Yeah. Yeah. How would you like to become mama? <laughs> but God does, the whole point is God does things yeah. out of the ordinary. Yeah. He's not going to come in the supernatural. Like we train him to do. Like we box him in to do. Like we show him how to do. And God's going to do it his way. And he can do it his way because he's God. He's always got the mic. Always. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. 88 and 92. Let me tell you something. God doesn't have to have a body that's in prime condition. God does not have to have lineage. He does not have to have pedigree. He does not have to have wealth. He does not have to have talent. He doesn't have to have ability. But what he does need is a heart and a life that says, I'm willing I'm an open vessel. I will let you out of the box. I will let you work in my life. I will let you be God in my life. I will be everything you need me to be. I present my body a living sacrifice. I give you everything you want, Jesus. Take of me. Take it all. Just use me. I wonder if there's anybody in the house who feel that way. God, whatever you can use of me, whatever you need of me, whatever you want. I want to give it to you. Oh. If God can use a stutterer like Moses, He can use me. If He can use a 17 year old boy. Go up against Goliath. So you come at me with sword and shield. But I come at you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. If he can use a young boy to slay the giant. You don't think he can use you? You don't think he can use you to do great exploits? In fact, the Bible says in the last days, the saints would do great exploits. You know why I believe that signs and wonders and miracles are ours right before the second coming of Jesus Christ? Because the book said that right before his coming, that the saints that are plugged in, the saints that are anointed, the saints that are reaching and teaching and trying and seeking, they're the ones that's going to be great exploits. Amen. I want it to happen in my life. I don't want to go through the most. I want to let God out of the box. I want to let him be God. 
as God was trying to break through into this new dispensation. Zacharias, he responded like a typical human. Listen to what he said, verse 18. And Zacharias said unto the angel, in this typical, whereby shall I know this? <laughs> Paul said, I believe. Help my unbelief. I want to get radical in my faith. I want to get to a place that I think so big of this God that to think small would be an insult to my own human reasoning. It would be an insult to my own sense. Just vowing to think small would be an insult to my own level of sensibility. But I want to think huge. I want to think big. I want to think like I've never thought before. I want to turn the God loose. Hey, if he did it back then, if Peter's shadow, just his shadow touched that Man, he was healed. When did it change? When did God become different? When did his power diminish? For when, when Jesus walked up to the little lady coming out of Nain with her boy in the casket, and he walked up to the casket and just touched the casket and says, Arise. When did it change? It hadn't changed. He's the same God, Brother Rice. Hey, man, if he healed the sick back then, he can do it now. If he raised the dead back then, he can do it now. If he healed cancer back then, he can do it now. If he put things, broken things back together again, he can do it now. Amen. If he healed the issue of blood then, he can do it now. Amen. If he healed the lame man at the pool, he can do it now. I don't want to be the one stuck in the rut of reasoning. Stuck in the rut of questioning God. I want to get past all the questions. I don't want to question anymore. I just want to trust. I just want to believe. I want to believe crazy. I want to believe big. Amen. I believe God is trying to call us out of the box. There's some folks I believe going into 2023. You're going to say, I want to pray like I've never prayed before. Amen. There's some time that I spend doing other things. I'm going to lay that down. And I'm going to start praying. I'm going to devote that time to more prayer. Amen. And let me tell you something. Don't pray small. Don't, don't pray little. He that prays big gets big things. Isn't that, isn't that a verse somewhere? He that prays big, thou shalt receive big. Okay. Hey, God is a God of big stuff. Let me tell you something. I heard two men on separate occasions, and they both prophesied that in Livingston, the epicenter revival was changing, and their exact words were, there will be a new thing. Think it not strange that God has planted FLC. Think it not strange that God's Spirit has been with us from the very first service. Think it not strange that when we barely entertain His presence, He moves in. I mean, I'm telling you, God is desiring to do something new in these last days. I believe He's wanting a church that still holds to the signs and the wonders and the miracles, the marvelous and the miraculous, the glorious. Amen. I believe God has something for us. If we will reach for it. And we will pray for it. Oh, Amen. We've got to pray. We've got to keep praising. We've got to witness. We've got to reach. We've got to teach. We've got to do everything that we can in these last days. Zacharias almost put God back in a box. Many times when we hear a call to a higher place in the spirit. 
we start rationalizing. Well, I've got this going. I've got that going. I'm not good at this. I can't speak good. I can't. I'm, I'm too busy here. I've got. And, and we go down our list of everything while we can't. Instead of stopping and making a real evaluation of what's most important. What can I put off? I'm telling you, early this morning, even before the sun came out, God was dealing with me. There's some things. And I pray for you. I pray for God to take our church to a whole new level. I ask him to anoint and bless each family. Amen. Let each family take take a, a, a just go to a whole new place in the spirit. Amen. I believe in these last days there's got to be a set apart people. Amen. I'm, I'm going to just put this in right here. A, a little while back I went to a gathering. And I'm trying to be gentle the way I say this. And at this gathering, it was a gathering of people that should have been absolutely on fire in the Holy Ghost. In this particular setting, when the praise started, this particular group of people should have been absolutely praising and worshiping and entertaining God with a fervency and a passion and a desire like you've never seen before. And I watched with a saddened heart as I looked around and in my mind I'm thinking God, I feel your power. I feel your glory. Just with a little bit of passion, that place could have blown apart. But yet I saw so many, I couldn't believe it, playing with their phones. And I left, I'm going to be honest with you, I left, my heart was broken. And then I got to thinking about had missionaries, and I'm proud. I'm proud of FLC because just the last couple of years, I've watched the transformation. As I've watched people that just because, not because you're asked to, but just spontaneous. I'm watching this FLC's blossoming into. Why can't we be a praising church and a word preaching church? Does it have to be one or the other? I don't want to go so far left that all we do is sugarcoat everything and dance and shout and go home. But I also don't want to go so far to the right that all I do is get up here and teach monotone and kill everybody. But where the spirit is, there's liberty. The spirit makes everything come to life. It's the salt. It's what makes things begin to work. It's the oil that greases the gears. Amen. And I watch as this particular group of people should have been on their feet giving God the praise. Yeah. And a phone was more important. The conversation with the person next door was more important. I told God last night praying, oh God, there's even more there's things I just want to lay down. In, in, my, in my spare time, I, I just, rather than rather than maybe Whatever, whatever takes up your time. Even a book that's not even necessary. Let me get your word in my hand. Let, let, let me find a place to pray. I want to begin to nourish the inspiration and the anointing in my life. I want to nourish it like it's the most important thing that it is. Because I want God out of the box. I'm telling you, I want FLC. I'm thankful where FLC's at. I've had missionaries that have stood right here in this pulpit. Tell me, Pastor, today, I've got it on recording. Missionaries standing right here, and you hear them just standing here, just speaking in tongues, bathing in the Holy Ghost. And you think, oh, they're just so spiritual. They walk in the Spirit. You know what it was? No. You know what it was? They stepped into this pulpit. And because... FLC had begun to prepare a way. They told me, Pastor, 
I needed that so desperately this morning. I'm talking about people that can go dry on the inside in the spirit. Broken. Given all they've got till they have nothing else to give. Amen. It's only the spirit that begins to breathe life. And I've had them tell me, you have no idea. We travel this country on deputation. And you have no idea how many churches we go to. And we feel little. We go and just give, give, give. And there's very little. FLC, I commend you. But I also know now is not the time to stop. I know there's a, it's a fallacy. And so many fall prey to this fallacy that we can, that a church gets to a certain point. Things start looking good. You hit triple digits. And everything's looking good. And then you go into coast mode. Oh, I'm telling you, until Jesus comes, until that Easter sky parts, I want us to press and push. Amen. The fire's burning. But I want us to take 55 gallon drums of high flammable fuel fuel and pour it on. I want us to pray like we never prayed before. I want us to praise and worship like we never have before. I want us to be in the Word of God like we never have before. I want us to teach the Word of God and preach the Word of God like never before. I want us to give ourselves completely like never before because I believe there's a place in the Spirit we can go if we will only turn to God and loose. Let him out of the box. Verse 12 in our text says, When Zacharias saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. And I'm amazed. I'm amazed what God did a while ago in terms of interpretation. He, he already preached this part of the message. The Spirit says, I've heard your prayer. I've heard your prayer. But don't stop. Don't stop pressing. Don't stop pushing. Amen. I don't know when God will answer that prayer you've been praying. But I know if you'll keep praying, there's coming a time he's going to answer. I don't know when God's going to fix that situation. But I know one thing. If you'll keep being faithful and you'll keep pushing, God's going to fix it, somebody. I don't know how God's going to save that lost loved one. But I know if you'll keep being faithful and you'll keep praying and you'll keep pushing and you'll keep reaching. I know he's going to save that lost loved one. Just don't give up. Luke 11 says, so I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it will be open to you. And that's great. We get excited about that verse. But the verse after it. For everyone, say everyone. everyone. That includes me. I'm not a weirdo. That includes me. For everyone who asks, and I love this emphatic tense. It's not maybe, and it's not might, but everyone who asks receives. Emphatic. I don't know when. Well, Pastor, I've prayed and prayed and prayed. Yeah, I know. I've prayed about a bunch of stuff too. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I'm trusting him that it's going to happen. He's heard my prayer. And he knows how to take care of what I commit to him. He that asks receives. He that knocks. <laughs> It shall be open. He that seeks will find. Ask. Seek. Knock. They caught out of the box. I can hear him knocking. Hey, take this box up lid off me. Take this wrapper off me. Cut that tape loose. Let me out of the box in your life. I'm ready to do some things. In your life. I'm expecting to see signs and wonders and miracles in 23. 
I'm speaking, Lord God, I'm speaking it as it already happens. Happened. With God outside of the box, my dear friend, your lost loved one can be saved. I said with God outside of the box, you lost one loved one can be saved. Whether they're too far gone, no. Not when God's outside of the box. Oh, they've gone too far. Oh, no. No. Oh, it's too difficult of a situation. I don't, I don't know if God can fix it. No. Not when God's outside the box. But the trick is me getting God outside of the box. It's me turning him loose. If I keep him in his little proverbial box, yep, I will just keep praying amiss. But when God is outside the box, listen. Turn of the central, 20th century, Azusa Street. They had an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Let me tell you something. People from all around the world came to Azusa Street because they wanted to experience the power. It was the sheer, unadulterated, anointed, prayed down power from the throne. <laughs> they didn't have to have Snapchat. They didn't have to have Facebook to spread it. They didn't have to have Twitter. They didn't have to have Breitbart News. They didn't have to have Fox News. They didn't have to have what all the other social media is to spread it. It spread because the power spreads. When God gets outside the box, I'm telling you, you let somebody that's in a wheelchair come in here and they begin to walk around this place. I don't have to have Facebook to spread it. Azusa Street had. Oh, I'm going to pester a little bit right now. I'm convinced, I'm going to be convinced that social media is straight from hell. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm going to challenge the leadership team. Y'all get ready. Come on. And I'm going to just go ahead. I had to do this, but here I go. Let us hear it. Come on. Here we go. Get off. Of I hardly ever mess with Facebook anymore. Come on. Come on. I, they made me reactivate my account for some stupid reason. The messenger or something. I couldn't use it unless my account. Big dummies had to activate it. They'll use this other thing. I'm figuring to deactivate that too. Come on. <laughs> I want to challenge FLC. Come on. Thank you, God. Everybody that's part of a, a leadership position, including leading a vacuum cleaner around this sanctuary. <laughs> I'm talking about all of us. Come on. I want to challenge you for January. Come on. Y'all ain't gonna like me. Y'all, 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 y'all. It's all right. Let's do it. Here we go. I want to turn it loose. I am sick of the enemy pushing God's people. I am sick of the devil having his way in people's life. I am sick of him pushing people to the brink of destruction and causing them to struggle. Hey man, I want to turn God loose. You look at me like I'm crazy. I'm telling you, I want to turn God loose to a place I've never seen before in my life. I've been around this thing a long time. But I want to see God like I've never seen him before. I want to experience him in a random spirit like I've never seen him before. I want to see his kind of glory. Leadership teams and the entire church. And I'm going to tell you what I'm fixing to tell you. You say, oh, I can do it, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I feel like I'm a man that, to some degree, has some self discipline. But when you start denying yourself, 
See, because Facebook, we want to know what everybody's up to. Huh? Well, how did this message turn into this? I know how it did. Because God's fixing to take us to a new level. He's fixing to get us out of the box. That's why, that's why it took this turn. I want to challenge FLC, those that will. The month of January. If you have to delete the app from your phone, Facebook, Snapchat, Blah Chat, whatever, Twitter, Instagram, help me out, somebody. TikTok. Come on. Knuckle talk, whatever. Come on. I really believe that if we can discipline ourselves in January to make a commitment, I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God. I don't need to know everything that's going on in your life. Everybody posts, hangs their nightcap out on Facebook. Want everybody to know how many calories they ate last night? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, calories. <laughs> Ain't nobody in here. I'm telling you, some of the crazy stuff is like, why does everybody need to know that? <laughs> and how did that happen? <laughs> now I know you watched the clothes last night. <laughs> Oh, great. Got a fresh underwear. I know that. I need to know that. I believe. Come on. I believe we make that Yeah. I felt God challenging me. I had no idea. This is what I was going to go here. But I feel in the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, God, we've only got a little sharp window left to work. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm telling you? Yeah. 2023. I remember in 1999 trying to make sure the programming was right on the computer. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to make sure that Y2K wasn't going to blow everything up. Yeah. And we were spending money trying to make sure, bringing in technicians and trying to make sure the whole computer system wasn't going to explode. Yeah. I look big as money grab. Bunch of liars. I just want to come in and reprogram them computers. That was 1999. This is 2023, almost. Never dreamed we'd see it. But I can tell you, we don't have long to work. We don't have long. Till our Savior splits the eastern sky. And FLC, I don't want us when the midnight cry sounds. I don't want us to be like those five foolish virgins. And we're running around. And then we're excited. And then we're all pumped up. Then we're ready to seek the anointing. Then we're ready to do what we're supposed to do. Then we're ready to get God out of the box. Then we're ready to seek for the anointing. Then we're ready to pray. Then we're ready to worship. Then we're ready to reach and teach. But I want us to be doing it right now. Amen. On fire, red hot in the Holy Ghost. So when the groom comes, the bride's ready to take that flight with him. Amen. I want God to get out of the box and be everything he wants me to be. Amen. Sister so Daniel, would you come please? <clears throat> There's some folks God has got bigger things in store for you. He's got bigger plans for you. But you've got to be willing to get out of the box with him. And there's a place God's wanting to work in your life. But you've got to be willing to go to that place to work with him. Amen. It's not always God that's got to move. Sometimes I've got to move. Amen. I believe there's some folks that your latter days are going to be better than your former days. Amen. I believe you've only scratched the surface. And I believe some folks that's taught a couple of Bible studies in your life. Amen. I believe in your latter days, you're going to teach multiple times over. 
The man of Bible studies you've taught all your life. I believe there's some of you that's going to experience the anointing like you never have because you began to seek it and you desire it. God is looking for somebody that catches it. That doesn't just hear pastor scream his lungs out on Sunday morning trying to get us to go to a new place. And then Monday morning, we're back into the same old, same old. January, 30 days. I wonder if anybody would commit with me. I'm done with social media. Don't have to have it. God don't need it. God didn't need it on, in Azusa Street at the turn of the 20th century. He doesn't need it now. That's right. I'll raise my hand. January, I'm done. I'm done with observing stuff of this world. If I got to get on social media, I'm going to socially get into Psalms. It's pretty social. Praise you, the Lord. Sing unto the Lord and his praise in the congregation of the saints. That is a rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in the king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with a timbre and heart. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek of the salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Let the high praises be in their mouth. Praise you, the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty act. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with a psalter and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I'm talking about letting God out of a box. But I'm not talking about just by praise. I'm talking about by commitment. I'm talking about by prayer. I'm talking about teaching the word of God. Preaching the word of God. Faithful to his house. Amen. I wonder if anybody wants to come around this altar with me before we leave. And say, Pastor, going into 2023. I'm making some commitments. I'm going somewhere in the spirit. I appreciate where I've been, but I'm not staying where I've been. I'm going to a new place. I'm going to a higher place. Anybody want to come and make some commitments with me? We've got to go where God's at. I said we've got to go where God's at. God is waiting on somebody to come to that place where he's working, where he's moving, where he's reaching, where he's touching. Do you want to go? Do you want to go? Come on, Pastor L.C., let's make some commitments together. So help me, God. Next year, I'm going to pray for you more than I've ever prayed for you. I'm going to study better than I've ever studied. I'm going to worship better than I've ever worshiped. God grant me strength in my body. I'm going to be more than I've ever been. God help me. We need one another.
Would you close your eyes? Now look around, please. But if there's something during this message God has talked to you about, don't be like Zacharias. Question away. Justify it away. Say, God, it looks impossible to me. 8892 seems impossible. But I'm ready, I'm ready to make that step, Lord. Moses, I can't talk good. But you can use me. Lord, I'm just a 17-year-old boy. I'm not going to fight a giant. But God, you can use me. If God has talked to you about something, why don't you right now make a commitment to God? Going into next year, I refuse next year to be a repeat of this year. I'm thankful for what God's done. I appreciate the blessings of God on 2022. But I wonder if there's anybody in this house that would refuse with me. I refuse. I refuse to do a redo of 2022 and 2023. I'm fixing to do something different. I'm fixing to do something different. I'm telling you. I'm ready to get radical. I'm ready to do something totally different. I'm ready for God to get out of the box. Is anybody here with me? Why don't you shake your hand up and say, Pastor, I'm going to go there with you. I'm going to go to where God's working. I'm going to go there. And together, that's how I see you. Somebody, somebody just reaches in the glory cloud. The Holy Ghost is here. Let God challenge you now. Can you make some commitments? Come on, make some lasting commitments. Not just a Sunday morning sensation. But God, at this moment, I'm making some commitments that's going to last a lifetime. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Before we leave, I wonder, the Lord is saying, I want you to come. We're going to anoint you with oil and pray for you. I'm stepping out in the spirit. I'm going to put God to a test. Say you're a fool. No. Well, I just believe my God's this big. 2023. 2023. You're going to see some things change your life. It's coming. It's coming. Receive it in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now understand what I'm telling you. Thank you, Jesus. I am thankful for what God did in 2020. I'm thankful God brought this young man in our life. Maybe I got a lot of work to do, but no. <laughs> I'm thankful for what God's done in 2022. So I'm not disparaging anything God's done. But I'm not satisfied with 2022. And so before we leave, if there's anybody God has challenged you by his word this morning, and you say, I will, Pastor, I'm going to a new place in 2023. We're going to go there. I want you to come. You stand shoulder to shoulder beside Brother Lewis St. here. And say, I'm going there. Begin to pray. Begin to offer a sacrifice to God right now. A sacrifice of your time. A sacrifice of anything that would hinder you from going to that place where God's at. God, here I am this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. If you're tired of status quo, let's go to a new place. Hallelujah. Pray big. Pray big. Pray big.
Zacharias, God has heard your prayer. Zacharias, God has heard your plea. Pray big. Pray big. Pray big. Pray big. Pray big. Yeah, no, no, no. Thank you. 